our, to the first talk of the day. Um, this is Bogdan, and my name is Patrick, and we are two students from the University of Groningen, and uh, we would like to talk about the Flask monitoring dashboard. Uh, we created this because with this you can do automatic monitoring and you can profile your Flask, your Flask applications. Um, yeah, so what is Flask? Flask is called a micro framework for Python. Uh, with Flask, you can build your own web services. Um, and because it's called micro framework, it means that it implements only the bare minimum, and this makes it really lightweight, basically. But on the other hand, you miss some features that you would like to have about monitoring and profiling your application, and this is something that the Flask monitoring uh, dashboard implements and deals with it. So suppose you have a Flask application um, and you are interested in the performance of your Flask application. Then with Flask on itself, it's not possible. Uh, another problem would be to see how much my web service is being used and when are its peak times. Um, you would probably also want to know um, what is the mean response time of an endpoint and what can I do to improve this. Um, another notion is an outlier. An outlier is a request that takes way longer to process than normal. Suppose you have a simple web services that just shows a number of emails, and then customer A has 20 emails and customer B has 1,000 emails. Then, of course, the response time for customer B would be way worse. And uh, if you are not so good developer, then you can use the FMD to see uh, that this customer has a lower response time, and um, then it can help you to improve it. Um, you would also like to know uh, specific from one request, which are the code fragments that are slow, and why are they slow? Usually we see that if your web service communicates with a database, then this communication um, bring some delay in your response. Um, and the last one is to see if your Flask application improved over the lifetime of your deployment. So, for example, you start with your Flask application, you implement a new feature, and you would like to see if this slows down your web services or not. So, how to deal with this? Uh, you can use some commercial monitoring tools like Pingdom, Windscope, or Google Analytics. But, for example, with Google Analytics, you just put some JavaScript code into your HTML page, which results in um, longer response times because more data is being sent, and on the client side, some additional code is being executed. So it's not the best option. You can also uh, try to uh, implement your own monitoring solution, uh, for example, by a Flask middleware. Uh, I have a small example of a Flask middleware over here. What you just do is that you wrap the WSGI app of the Flask application into your own class, and then you can use this for um, your own monitoring solution. But if you want to implement this, it takes time and effort to do so. So most developers will probably end up in the third solution, and that means that you'll have to deploy your Flask application without any analytics. But luckily, we uh, created a few years ago the Flask monitoring dashboard, and this is um, a Python framework, an extension for Flask that can offer this functionality. So in short, it works with four monitoring levels. Uh, you can choose to have level zero, uh, 
then you only see when a certain endpoint has last being is last being requested and no further uh, uh, functionality. You can also choose to go for level one. Uh, then you get even information about uh, the performance, so how fast a certain request processes and how often it is used. Uh, with level two and three, we go even further. We have a profiler um, that as soon as a request comes in, it profiles that request. And uh, the notion of outliers, as I already explained, outliers are uh, requests that take way longer to process than normal, and you are interested to see why. Um, of course, this functionality um, is, uh, offers some kind of hierarchy. So if you go for level three, then you have all functionality from level two plus more. Um, yeah. How have we implemented this? I think that's where everyone is interested in. Um, with Flask, uh, Flask has an um, API endpoint for uh, its view function, basically. So that's a dictionary from the function name to the actual function implementation. That's what you can see on line two. And basically, we read from this function and we monkey patch this function with the desired uh, monitoring level. Uh, for example, if you have monitoring level one, we added the code for this monitoring level one on line 13. So it just times the function, and at the end, it saves the, um, the data into the FMD database. Well, how does it look? Um, we generate a number of pages in which you can see the result of what the FMD collect is. Uh, so this is an example application, and you can see per row the endpoints, and you can see how often it's being used and uh, when it is last being requested. Um, and it's easily to change the monitoring level on the fly um, by clicking one of these four buttons. Uh, the same view can be generated for the performance, but instead of the number of hits, we see the median request duration uh, for today or for the past week or something. Um, the page that I just showed was an overall um, graph. This is endpoint specific. So for a certain endpoint, you can see when its peak times are, uh, when it's used uh, often, and when it's used not. Um, and that can help you to decide whether I should scale my web services in some uh, peak times or not. Um, as I already said, monitoring level two and three start with a profiler. Um, we basically have the main thread, and before the uh, request is being processed on the main thread, we start another thread with the profiler that continuously takes a snapshot of the main thread, and at the end, it aggregates the information and it generates a graph like this. Um, with this graph, you can see per code line, basically, where uh, a certain amount of time is being spent. And uh, this can help you to detect that, for example, in this graph um, on the bottom, you see that quite a lot of time is being spent with the database communication. So this can help you to improve uh, optimizing this. Well, to go more specific, I already explained that before the request is processed, another thread is started. Um, using the Python traceback package, we can continuously capture uh, the stack trace of the main thread. Um, and this gives information about uh, the amount of time being spent in a certain function. Uh, and at the end, the distribution is computed by comparing it to the total execution time. So if you see that the total execution time is two seconds, and you know that half is being spent in a certain function, well, it's easy to make the computation. 
Okay. You can so, do this. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So uh, the last feature of the fast monitoring dashboard that we're going to present um, are the outlier collection. Is the outlier collection. So it's very interesting to see why an outlier is an outlier. As we said before, an outlier is basically just a request that takes way longer than the previous requests. So it might be that the machine is overloaded, so we collect uh, CPU information and memory information about the machine, or it's possible that um, it, the execution for that request took a stranger uh, a path than usual, so that's why we collect stack trace information. Um, we also get extra data about request headers, request environment, so that you can actually find out what happened. But um, a very interesting point is the overhead of the FMD, because at the end of the day, the FMD is still an extension. As, as any extension, it has some overhead. Um, the whole guiding idea that, that sat behind a lot of our design decisions was make the FMD as lightweight as possible. So with have, make it have as little overhead as possible. But um, we never actually um, measured this overhead until now. Um, this is actually the topic of my uh, master thesis. And I'm going to present uh, some results that we have so far. So what we did was basically um, build some benchmarks that stress different types of physical resources, uh, CPU um, intensive endpoints, memory intensive endpoints, and disk intensive endpoints. And we've grouped CPU and memory intensive endpoints together because the results are very similar. Um, and again, we have two different groups of monitoring levels. We have monitoring levels zero and one, so those without the profiler. And as you can see, the overhead is actually fixed, so it doesn't depend on the base duration of the endpoint, and it's around 10 milliseconds, let's say. And then we have the overhead of monitoring levels two and three, which is a bit higher, uh, because this one contains the profiler, and it, it's directly proportional with, um, with the duration of the endpoint. So we have a fixed um, uh, component of either between 9 and 70 milliseconds between, uh, for CPU and memory intensive endpoints, or a bit higher, up to 200 milliseconds for disk intensive endpoints, while the proportional component is uh, either around 10% for CPU and memory, or up to 63% for disk intensive endpoints. And uh, this might sound like a lot, but um, we have to keep in mind what the usual overhead of a profiler is. So uh, the default profiler of Python, C profile, is, has an overhead of 100 to 200% without even um, writing the results to the DB, to the database. So um, of course, the difference is that our profiler is a statistical profiler, whereas the C profile is deterministic. So our profiler actually takes a snapshot, as Patrick explained, uh, every sampling period, and then computes, um, infers where time was being spent. Uh, and now, time for the demonstration. So uh, let's say we have a very simple Flask application and with some endpoints defined. And if we want to use the uh, flat monitoring dashboard, all we have to do is uh, add two lines of code. Is it readable, by the way? Yeah. 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 Good. <laughs> A bit bigger? Uh, yeah, like this? <laughs> so all you have to do is bind the dashboard to the app, to the Flask app object. Now the uh, um, application is up and running. And if we go to the dashboard, 
we see all the endpoints defined in our Flask application. Uh, now, let's just set one endpoint to monitoring level two and make a request to it. Take some time. Okay. Now we see that this endpoint was last requested four seconds ago, one time. We can also have a look at the median request duration. It took three seconds. Uh, and what's interesting here, if we click on it, we get some uh, uh, specific visualizations to this endpoint. And for instance, if we go to the profiler, uh, we can see where time is being spent. So we had some, this is just a demo one, but yeah. Um, so basically, you can uh, see what, which portion of your code takes up how much of the request. Uh, OK, this is just a simple sam uh, demo app. But we also have a real use case um, of a real Flask application called Zigu um, that has been using the Flask monitoring dashboard for, I think, two years now? Two years. Yeah. So I can show you some real data. Over here, um, you can see where the when the Zigu uh, API is most being used. So you can see, for instance, that um, most people use it uh, at night or later in the evening, and also that there was a peak uh, on May 5th for some reason. Um, other information that you, can, you get is API performance. You can see for each endpoint, uh, you can see a box plot of the responses. If we zoom in on one, you, we see an outlier here. And well, you can see that the median execution time is about one second. And um, it's, it has a relatively low variance. And these are basically the, the views that are deployment-wide. But if you go to a specific um, endpoint, you get views that are endpoint um, specific. So you get the, when, when this endpoint is being used, the same sort of heat map. Um, you get the per version performance. So to see how the performance of this specific endpoint has evolved with the different versions. Um, you can get per user performance, which doesn't work right now. <laughs> uh, this, this can be set by the, by the developer, but it wasn't. And you can get the profiler information. So you get a lot of info. It's yeah, um, really hard to show this during a demo and to explain this during a demo. That's why the previous endpoint was much simpler. <laughs> Um, yeah, and this was it for the demonstration. And thanks for listening to us, and we'll be happy now to answer all your questions. One second, I'll give you the, the microphone. Do you want to answer the question? Sorry. Yeah. Sure. So thanks for the great talk. It looks really shiny and useful. Um, but I have a question about the overhead of your monitoring system, yes. especially compared to the overhead of, let's say, the Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. Because you say you don't want to use Google Analytics because of all the overhead it, it imposes. So how do those compare? Uh, we haven't really tried the Google Analytics, uh, so we don't know the, the overhead of Google Analytics, but if you look at the monitoring level zero and one, those who that get performance and utilization information, uh, it's really low. It's yeah, between three and 12 milliseconds. So, um, and the advantage, of course, over Google Analytics is that with, you get this low overhead for only two lines of code, which is nice. <laughs>
So where is uh, the data stored? In a, yeah, in a database. Um, we use uh, SQL Alchemy, so you can use the database of your choice. You can use SQLite uh, or PostgreSQL or MySQL, uh, whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, you can use uh, both uh, separate database, for, particularly for the flat monitoring dashboard, or you can also use the database that you're already using for your Flask application. Question over here. Hi. Um, how did you arrive at the solution of using a separate thread to pull the trace back instead of just setting a uh, set trace function? Yeah, this was uh, our research internship. Um, we, yeah, we had to implement a profiler, and um, yeah, the, the, there was at some point we had to make a choice between deterministic profiling and statistical profiling. And yeah, we made this choice um, exactly with the, the low overhead in mind. So if you have a separate thread, then the normal request can execute normally. So uh, we figured the overhead would be smaller. And indeed, it actually is. <laughs> so. Uh, hey, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, uh, here you have uh, um, statistics for uh, like for heavy endpoints. Uh, but question is, uh, did you measure something for less heavy endpoints? Because the thing is, if it adds three milliseconds for like one second endpoint, yeah, no, it no. will take. Um, yeah. So. Uh, so what we did is we took the same endpoint and we tweaked the parameter so that it lasts 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, 500, one second. And then we did a linear regression. And um, we saw that for monitoring level zero and one, uh, it's always in the same range, basically, because um, no matter how long the base duration of the endpoint is, the work that the flat monitoring dashboard does is always the same. So it starts a new thread, and then it stores one row in the database. That's it. So it's not for 0 and 1. For 2 and 3, indeed, the longer the endpoint lasts, the more work it has to do. So that's why the proportional overhead. OK, so it means that for shorter uh, endpoints, it will take not 0%, but I don't know, 100%. Uh, because it's. Yeah, it's those are, those are um, the, basically the um, coefficients of the linear regression. <laughs> so, yes, if you have an endpoint that's 5 milliseconds, then it will, the overhead will be 100% of it. OK. But, and the second question, uh, you have an application that actually works with uh, sorry, uh, your uh, framework. And um, at least from what I saw, they have a couple of endpoints on third level. So it's like the most in extensive one. Uh, how do they, maybe you know, how do they experience uh, performance degradation? So. Uh. We actually haven't measured the overhead on that particular application, but um, yeah, we are in touch with a, a developer of that application, and um, the, the, he only complained about uh, monitoring levels two and three because of the profiler. So with zero and one, it's fine. <laughs> um, so to answer your question, we, we don't really uh, no, specifically, because we never measured for that use case, but we might do it in some Thanks. future. Hi. Um, do you know why the disk-intensive endpoints takes, take so much longer than the CPU-intensive ones? Uh, yes, um, because a lot of the uh, a lot of what the profiler does is storing the profiled information to the database. So if the endpoint itself uh, stores to the database and then the profiler also wants to store to the database, there will be a, basically a... Um, uh, okay, so the database is running on the same machine? Yeah, yeah, during okay. the... 
this is what we, uh, how we ran the benchmarks. Yeah. Did you consider uh, writing to an in-memory database, which then can uh, uh, store, move it to uh, well permanent storage later on to avoid the overhead of uh, trying to store it within the request? Uh, yes, I think we did consider that at some point as a possible uh, improvement. But yeah, the, the actually the second part of my thesis is uh, reducing the overhead. So okay. that's, okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> yet to come. Yeah, okay. Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> I do you have an idea of uh, how many sites are using uh, the dashboard and, uh, you know, like reference sites and experiences for, from those? Uh, we don't have an actual uh, number of uh, active users, but we can see on uh, PyP that it's downloaded over 40,000 times. Uh, so based on that, you can make a prediction. Hi. Um, can you export to a, a time series database like Prometheus, for example? Uh, not yet. Okay. Um, no, because we use SQL Alchemy. Um, you can export the data, uh, but you cannot directly fight to Prometheus or something like that. Uh, have you looked at uh, maybe uh, uh, you, uh, extending this to other uh, web frameworks like Django or something else? Uh, we considered this in the beginning. Uh, first, we started with Flask, um, and we had ideas to export it later on also to Django. Uh, but it's still an ID, and we have not made any progress on this. Um, so we are running a Flask app with multiple web servers. It's getting a lot of traffic, but I really would like to use it, but I'm a bit afraid that the amount of data it will generate might cause issues, but I'm not sure if, if it is an issue. So that's the first question. And the second question, would you recommend to use this in development mode or actually on production servers? Um, I would like to argue that it's better to use on development side. We have the four uh, monitoring levels, and the higher the level, the more data you collect. Uh, so for endpoints that are used really a lot, and endpoints that has to be as fast as possible, you have to try to set it to a lower level, uh, because then also your overhead will be smaller. Yeah, to add to this, I would say use uh, monitoring level 0 and 1 in production and 2 and 3 in development, maybe. Um, I was wondering, uh, because of the extra overhead, um, it could be useful to allow the application to sample requests. So say only 1 in 10 requests gets an actual profile and the rest just get level 1 or 0. Yeah, uh, that's is that something you already have or uh, thinking about? No, what you can do is um, set the sampling period. So uh, by default, it samples as soon as it, uh, as soon as, as fast as it can in a continuous while loop. But you can sample, you can set the sampling period to 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds. But yeah, also sampling one in every this many requests is another uh, possible way to go. Any questions left? Oh. Across the room, of course. <laughs> there we go. Uh, thanks. So a little bit less of a question and more a response to the, a couple that have come up. Um, one thing that we do to solve the sampling uh, issue, especially if you have multiple web server or web uh, heads, is uh, to build uh, two images, one that profiles and one that does not and just deploy nine that don't and one that does, and then you get that at your load balancer. You have now a 10% sample rate. So uh, that also solves, you know, I believe it's better to do it in production because often the outliers are uh, an anomaly in your data more than in your code. So two cents. Thank you. And the last questions, maybe from the audience. If not, I have one question. It's uh, fun to see that Flask is so popular. Armin Raunach, who is the author of uh, Flask, was one of the uh, uh, first keynote speakers at PyGrun, I think, 2010 or 11, I believe. 
And at that stage, it was still like a playground, like a fun idea he had. And it's interesting to see now that it's growing such a large ecosystem. And every year, there's some talks about Flask, and it's growing and growing and growing, growing. It's a really healthy uh, ecosystem. Great to see your talk. So uh, I'd like to give a big hand to uh, Patrick and Bogdan. Well done. And I brought a stack of paper for you guys. Yes, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, for your great talk and uh, Thanks. you as well. And, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And uh, that's it. Thanks for, for your being here.